Welcome back to Digital Charcuterie, folks. My name is Andrew Fantasia, and this is part two of my Unboxing Marvel United Multiverse Trilogy. Let's not waste any more time. Like, subscribe, buy my novels, and part two. Here we go. And the one that has me the next most excited is actually the core box. And it's nice and heavy and chunky, so let's open up the core box, which is another box that people tend to forget about, right? Because you're so excited by what... The expansions offer, the expansions always delight every time they get announced, but you always end up forgetting the core. And I think particularly this core box is the one that gets the most overlooked because, you know, other core boxes are full of the very, very necessary obvious choices, right? They're full of your Wolverines and your Batmans and Wonder Womans. Um, I mean, this core box's most famous character is like... Dr. Doom in a different outfit. So I can totally understand how some people would forget this exists. There's just a little spare thing there. We don't need that. But man, this is beautiful. Oh, it's so nice to finally hold this in my hands. It, it's surreal. It's very surreal because it's not like Christmas morning because Christmas morning is once a year. This is almost two years in the making. Two years of just pure anticipation. Christmas is usually just a month of anticipation, but man. All right. We got our rule book and it's a little bit longer, like only by two pages. That's okay. And then we have all of our tokens, beautiful tokens to add to the collection of tokens. That's another thing that I opted out of just to save money is the plastic tokens. And like the cardboard locations and stuff, I'm, I'm torn because I'm like, do I need the plastic tokens? Uh, because I play this so often, or is it worth it to save my money? I don't know. Um, one day I'll find out. Uh, for now, I am content. Okay, so these are in plastic, because of course they are. And these are taped up, so let me just get this off carefully. I'll be right back. All right, what do we got? Niflheim. Muspelheim. Ooh, London. Project Pegasus. Kunlun. United Nations, Alchemax, TVA. This one is really exciting when I saw that that was getting announced. I think we were fresh off of Loki Season 1 when this game got announced, too, so that was a big deal. And here we go with some tape. Or not tape, but just like the very easy-to-remove paper tape. Uh, this is something I never use anymore because I thankfully got the playmat. And actually, this is a little bit bent. Look at that. Just a tad. It just got crushed a little tiny bit. Um, and honestly, if anything is going to be even remotely damaged, I'm glad it's one of the few things I never, ever use. So super grateful that it had to happen there instead of anywhere else. But let's, you know, touch wood. <laughs> All right. Look at these dashboards, man. They feel so sleek. Mm-hmm. Oh, the, the MCU tale that never was. It really, I was really looking forward to the Kang Dynasty, man. That's a shame what happened. Um, all right. Card time. I think this might be where my, uh, my, not obsession, what's the word? Where my uh, particular storage uh, diligence came from. Because this is laid out exactly like how I always lay every one of my United boxes out, where all the hero cards are on the left and all the villain cards are on the right. Don't know why. I just started doing it that way and I've never looked back since. Okay. You got your essentials right here. Core box has to have essentials. We got these challenge cards. We got superhero and super villain. And then all the goodies, all the villain cards are in there. Cosmic Ghost Rider, who is not Nicolas Cage, so I don't know why I'm doing his voice. Uh, and there is Mr. Immortus, with lots of henchmen. I love me lots of henchmen. Yes. All right. Any excuse to look at more Edouard Guiton art? So yeah, henchmen all the way. Okay. Does anybody else feel that way? Does anybody else get more excited when a villain has henchmen than when their threats are just, 
you know, cards with no art on them. I don't know. Am I in the minority or do other people feel the same? Uh -huh. Let's get that cellophane off of you. Okay. There's just a spider web of cellophane off to my left here. There she is. There's my girl. The one in this box that had me the most excited. What do you think of the shield, Peggy? I think it works. Yeah, it does. There's Ironheart. I love this color of Ironheart way better than what they did with her in the film. I hope when uh, when her Disney Plus show... Whoa! There goes her card. I hope when her Disney Plus show comes out, she looks like this. Because uh, I love Black Panther Wakanda forever, but that Ironheart suit wasn't it. This is Spider-Man 2099, how he ought to look. Thank you very much. That white suit was pretty bland. Thankfully, this rectifies that. Speaking of Black Panther Wakanda Forever, there she is, the second Black Panther. Very nice. Very, very nice. Loki. Burdened with glorious purpose. And he's turning into Captain America. Mm -hmm. Cosmic Ghost Rider's cards are so cool. The art on this guy, man. I'm not a Punisher fan, but this is a great idea. This is a lot of fun. And there's Mighty Thor. Look at that. She's taking the Bifrost. Beautiful. Oh, and underneath, underneath and all, is a giant plethora, just a chunk of equipment cards. Now, this is going to be interesting because that's a deep well. And these guys... Just fit in there. So once I start sleeving those, mm, we might run into some complications. But that's a problem for tonight. That's what I'm going to spend the night doing is sorting all of that out once I'm done uh, all of this and all of my work meetings and everything like that. And today is actually the three-episode premiere of The Rings of Power Season 2. But I was looking forward to that for a while. But now, now that this is here, I don't know, man. I might have to put that on hold because I've been looking forward to this much more vehemently. All right. All of our equipment. I love these little equipment cards. So nice. There's the the, uh, the average. I was going to say the generic ones. Oh, yeah. These cards. The battle plans, too. Mm-hmm. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm, I've already plotted out. I'm moving these around into... The different spots where they belong. So for example, Cyclops' card I'm going to put in the X-Men box if there's space for it, which I think there is. I think I've already worked that out. But sorry, I'm holding these in such a weird way. Um, the problem is, even if I do that, it's fine. It, it's just this well isn't going anywhere. So I might have to use this well as well. <laughs> no pun intended. A black cube. Very nice. All right. Who am I least interested in here? Uh, Loki. Let's take a look at Loki. He's got two daggers. He's got horns. He's got a little grin on his face because he's a smug little guy. Yeah. That's Loki, all right. Okay, next. Let's take a look at Mighty Thor. Wow, I still remember when they revealed this. Who's that Pokemon? And it was Mighty Thor. And I saw this, this base with the runes. And I thought, wow, their their bases are getting very detailed. And wow, I can't believe I'm actually holding her. That's insane. All right. Spider-Man 2099, his web thing that he's got behind him, or his cape or whatever that is, was not expecting that. I forgot that that's part of his uh, his look. But again, just a big mini, big tall mini. They really, the core boxes, they're really going all out with the minis, I guess, to really impress people in the stores. Because those DC United minis, man, Superman is huge compared to everybody else because he's flying so high. Oh, I love this. And she's stepping on that little um, mask. Mm -hmm. Great. Iron Heart. Beautiful. Just beautiful. What else do we got here? We got Maestro. 
and he's always uh, surrounded by like, yeah, there it is. He's got Mjolnir at his feet there. And I think he's stepping on Iron Man's helmet or Ant-Man's helmet. I don't know. But that's how I, I remember there was a, an action figure of Maestro. And on his bandolier, he had like Captain America's shield and Iron Man's helmet and just things he had stolen from all the heroes he killed in the future. Because in the future, he kills heroes. That's his thing. Okay, Immortus. I love that giant hat. That's so, like, 1950s, 1960s villainy. That, those huge hats, man. I think this was the first villain in this whole set that was announced, too. Outstanding. Man, he's standing... He's standing on, like, a whirlpool. And... Robert Downey Jr., who's getting paid way too much to play this character. But man, that's a beautiful miniature. Right? Emperor Palpatine sitting on his throne. That's what it's all about. If anybody ever makes a homebrew Star Wars United, there you go. There's your Palpatine figure right there. Um, I love Star Wars, but I hope they don't make Star Wars United because that's... I, I'm in too deep as it is, people. Uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider. Gorgeous. Very cool concept for an anti-hero character. I'm very happy with that, but not as happy as I am with this box's leading lady. Peggy. Excuse me, Agent Carter. Right, I shouldn't call her Peggy. I don't know her that well. All right. So cool. And that's the core box. Oh my gosh, there's so many more. Uh, my feet are getting tired. I'm going to try to sit down for this one. We'll see. Maybe it'll be a disaster. But Civil War is next. Next most excited one for me. Uh, all right. Oh, there's the back. Just a box full of blue. Lots of blue characters. Uh, Civil War is one of the few Marvel comics that I have read uh, in its entirety because it's only like seven issues or something it's nothing crazy um the thing about modern comics that i don't love particularly this one is the art is beautiful and it's better than anything i could ever draw in my life but it's not colorful and vibrant civil wars art is very bleak and just lots of dark reddish browns and grayish browns and it's I don't know when I think of comic book art I like the the 1970s candy colored you know Steve Ditko Jack Kirby kind of thing and when it doesn't look like that it's just not a million percent for me uh oh wow this is a hefty rule book for an expansion I guess that makes sense. There's a lot to go over here. I really hope... Uh, yeah, this looks like it's coming along nicely. I can still see the screen. You guys can still see what's there. And I can actually sit because I was uh, starting to feel the pain in my legs. All right. There's one side of the Civil War. And there's the other side, the Clash of Heroes. Both of these intrigue me a bunch. And I'm a solo player. So that should tell you something. Very, very curious about this. All right. Okay. And then we've got these. Very nice. We've got the reds and the blues. Uh, I'm so happy that DC is doing something similar. I think that's the only thing about DC Superheroes United where we basically got a one-to-one -one equivalent, right? Because we were expecting that whole season to just be a one-to-one -one equivalent of Marvel. But no, it just did its own thing except when it came to Clash of Heroes, and they essentially emulated this, which I am totally okay with. I hope Season 2 of DC does more one-to-one -one stuff. Um, I guess they did Suicide Squad, kind of like um, the, uh, the Sinister Six, but it felt a little different. All right. Let's get that off to the side there. Wow. Okay, let me center that a little better. Oh, I'm so happy I can actually sit down. Okay, so we've got... Da, 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 come on out. We've got these. 
is red and blue. Okay. And then we've got, oh, that's a little wobbly because of these. These should be like that. There we go. All right. Well, I'm going to start with Team Iron Man because to me that is the least exciting team. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's open you up without cutting myself. I like my flesh to not be pierced by metal. There we go. Haha, <laughs> Clash of Heroes. Okay, a little rules card. Love it. Clash of Heroes event cards. These are beautiful colored cards. Team Blue Missions. Okay, yeah, I gotta read the rules so that I know exactly what these are all about. Iron Spider. My name is Peter Parker, and I've been Spider-Man since I was 16 years old. I think that's exactly what he says. Mm-hmm. Oh, so cool. Can't wait to make her fight the cheetah. Wonder Man. I always mix him up with Sentry, because they're both just like, hey, I'm a dude, and I have Superman powers. Um, yeah, very, very strange left of center characters from Marvel. Yellow Jacket, um, who I always forget is not a variant. He's not uh, the same as Ant-Man because the Ant-Man we got, I believe, was Scott Lang. And this is Hank Pym. And here's a different Iron Man. Beautiful art on that Iron Man. Okay. I'm so sorry if sometimes during that flip through I just did, uh, I was not pointing right at the camera. I'm still getting used to doing this while sitting down. Okay, here we go. Next batch of cards. Oh, this is so exciting. All right, I think I got a seam right here. I seem to have a seam. No, that's, yeah, yes, yes, yes. We did it. Mission accomplished, guys. A grown man defeated a cellophane wrapper. You can all breathe easily. All right. Want to be very careful. Don't want to bend any cards because these are nice. And I waited two years almost to get them, so don't want to have to replace anything. All right. I think we got it. We got it. There was almost a casualty, but we got it. All right. These, again, beautiful looking cards that I need to figure out how they work. With the population thing. It's been a long time since I looked at the rules for uh, the Civil War stuff. Hulk Lane has his special card. So like something like that, I probably would not sleeve because um, it wouldn't get shuffled much. Oh, I'm so excited for her, but we'll see. Today's gonna be a very sleeve heavy day and I am 100% okay with that. And I'm 100% okay with her. Goliath, oh, poor guy. See that, that stuff that's happening to him? Uh, in the comics, they sent, like, a robot Thor to kill him. And uh, it wasn't the real Thor, but everybody thought it was. And they were all freaking out because they're like, wait a minute, Thor's supposed to be dead. I thought Surtur killed him. Um, but no, that wasn't the real Thor. But then eventually the real Thor came back um, in his own book. And I remember that only because I'm rereading something I used to read back in the day, which was Wizard Magazine. I don't know if anybody else read Wizard Magazine, but I used to love it. Back when I was in college, I was, you know, just hooked on Wizard Magazine. Um, and they had uh, one of the ones I was just rereading had an article about that very story, about Goliath being killed by a fake Thor. And speaking of Goliath, he's our first... Uh, oversized hero that I'm going to be taking a look at in just a minute here once we get these cards once we get these cards sorry I'm just trying to make sure they are in focus of the screen uh-huh Ooh, excelsior and the wedding rings ah oh, his stuff is the coolest web shooters beautiful all those trick arrows uh-huh oh and then this is a thing this is a thing for the team red that's right Lots of little tiny cards. So I can put those there. Ooh, I just hope everything fits once the sleeves go on. That's all. These are deep wells. We're going to be fine. It's the core box that scares me. All right. Look at those little tracker cubes. 
I was trying to think of what colors were missing for tracker cubes. I don't think we have purple or orange or yellow. So if season four is in fact um, supernatural themed, as I would, was hoping it was, purple or orange would kind of match that vibe, I think, that Halloween-y vibe. All right, Iron Spider. Let's look at these kind of two at a time here. I love how they separated these, by the way, by teams. These are my two least excited characters in this box. I like that, that little clear thing there. Um, yeah, Iron Man and Spider-Man. Iron Man, just to me, Iron Man just always looks like Iron Man, right? You could put him in as many different suits as you want, but to me, he just, he just looks like Iron Man. All right, there is Yellow Jacket. <laughs> Those giant shoulder things. His peripheral vision must be garbage. Uh, he's standing on a bottle cap. I love it. I forgot that he's standing on a bottle cap. Oh, man. We need more small characters, man. They're so much fun. Let's do Wonder Man next. Oh, no. That's not Wonder Man. Never mind. I lied. We're not going to do Wonder Man next. Let's do Tigra next. With her big vine. Mm-hmm. I don't know her deal. She is someone that I learned about from this game. All right. I love when that happens in Marvel United. Teach me about characters. I didn't know who Dupe was. I didn't know who Phantom X was. But when I got the game, I learned. I gotta make sure she's in properly. Kate Bishop. Awesome. One of the characters I was most looking forward to seeing in a season three. Because that Hawkeye show was pretty rad. Uh, what's next? What's next? Spectrum. Ooh, her base is cool. And she's just flying up, up, and away. Great flying pose that they got on her. I hope I'm showing those off okay. And there's Hulkling with his wings. So cool. He's a Kickstarter exclusive. Beautiful. I mean, the guy is a green monster with wings and a sword and magic wedding rings. Like, come on. What more would you want out of a hero? Uh, Wonder Man. With purple, our first look at translucent purple. Which is my favorite color, so I dig it a bunch. Something to help him stand out from being just another face in the crowd. And he's getting his own show, too, so we'll see what that's like. <laughs> Wow. Wow, wow. That whoever whoever had this idea in the production phase. Like that's it. That's how you do Captain America. My gosh. <laughs> All right. And finally, oh, he's so heavy and chunky. And that is Lawrence Fishburne. So we have Lawrence Fishburne in the game now. Big, big, chunky man. Look at that. He's heavy too. Sweet. Hey, okay, this is even better than Christmas morning. All right, War of Kings. This is a juicy one. This was one of the first expansions that they announced for Multiverse. Um, and man, did it ever make me happy because, again, just like Annihilation, it was a big old box of nothing but new folks who were missing from the roster. Uh, and unlike Annihilation, this was chock full, absolutely swarming with characters, and it even had an anti hero. So that makes it a ton more interesting and exciting to me than Annihilation was. All right, War of Kings, here we go. Ah, oh, still getting used to opening these very different feeling glossy boxes made of sterner stuff than the other seasons. So there's that. All right, welcome to the royal family. Oh, am I a royal now? Okay, well, I wouldn't mind getting some of those royal paychecks. Huh? Prince Harry, you listening? Okay. We've got 
uh, Terrigen Mist. We've got Water. I forget what that is, but I think it has to do with Gorgon, because he's like a rock dude. Uh, so I have to remember how that works. Ooh, the War of Kings. There we go. Okay. No more paper. Adelan, the base of the Inhumans. Love it. Blue area of the moon. That's gorgeous. The Watchers. Yeah, we still don't have Uatu the Watcher. Maybe next time. Tarnax 4. Sweet. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. All right. And here are some more beautiful dashboards. Look at that. That's a different track than what I'm used to. Vulcan, who is one of the hardest henchmen in the game. Yeah, Gladiator is going to be a little bit more difficult. Vulcan's more simple. But man, can't even hurt Gladiator. Because he's tough. Gladiator's tough. He punched Juggernaut into the horizon, man. You don't, you don't mess with somebody who can do that to the Juggernaut. Oh, hey, purple. Okay, so <laughs> I was wrong. We do have a purple one. All right, so now we need orange. And orange is the color of Halloween, and Halloween and Supernatural go together like peanut butter and chocolate, which is also Reese peanut butter, which is also orange. So, season four, Supernatural, let's make it happen. All right. Here they are. Here are a bunch of Inhumans who I will probably mistakenly call Eternals because I do that all the time. And that's another team we need to see. Black Bolt, lovely. He looks just like the actor who plays him too. They, whoever they, that guy, I forget his name. Um, Anson Mount, I think, but yeah. Great casting. Medusa, who I'm very surprised was not an anti-hero because she was brainwashed into being a member of the Frightful Four. So... Maybe we'll get a Frightful Four in the future, and maybe they'll just retroactively make her part of it, even though she's blue, which I am totally okay with. Crystal, there she is. Look at that. And she's dressed just like Charlie Brown. All right. <laughs> Love it. This guy. This guy is so much fun. Look at that mustache. Karnak. Not to be confused with the Johnny Carson psychic character. And Gorgon. Definitely my least favorite inhuman. Like he's just, just a big rock guy, but he's still cool. Alright. And the villains. Oh no, and there's still some heroes in here too. That's right, because this box has a lot of hero decks inside. So they just kind of have to spread the love a little bit. I'm okay with that. Oof, that was close. That was close. It almost felt like I slashed one of the cards, and thankfully I don't think I did. But... All right. There we go. That should do the trick. Oh! It didn't just do the trick. It did the trick, and then... Got ravenous applause and a standing ovation after the trick. All right, Triton. <laughs> Look how cool he is. So he's going to use those water tokens. Man, that's a great hero deck. Look at that. And Gladiator. Wow, what an awesome looking character Gladiator is. I'm so glad they included him. And then I'll just breeze through these because I want to be quick. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Gladiator and Vulcan's villain decks are both there. And they are both magnifique. Okay, let's start with Vulcan, because I think he's the least interesting one. He's just a guy flying away. Um, very heroic-looking villain. Like, that pose and that um, name and that look, he looks like a superhero, but he's not. He's not a superhero. He's mean. He's red. And like I've said before, if Apocalypse can be purple, that means when they put out a red guy, you know he did something bad. Uh, all right. Let's do Gorgon next. I forgot he's got that big mace. That's pretty neat. What a cool looking box. There's so many characters in this. Uh, next we'll do Black Bolt. With a little tuning fork on his head. 
His cards didn't seem like they really made it clear what his sonic powers are going to be like, so I really want to read his cards more and see. Uh, speaking of people with tuning forks on their heads, Lockjaw! This was our first glimpse, right? Tiago Arania pulled this guy out and was like, woof, woof! Um, and that's how we knew we were getting in humans. <laughs> that's awesome. Great miniature. Next, let's get Karnak. With his big head, he uh, he should fight Immortus with a head like that. Just a solid character. Like if I was an Inhuman, I would be Karnak. That would be like he's styling. Okay, Medusa. Wow, she's huge. She's so heavy because her hair is so thick. I guess as the real Medusa would be. Not the Greek mythology Medusa. But you know what? Greek mythology united. Now that I think about it, that would be kind of fun. All right. Gladiator. Wow. Sorry, I'm <laughs> I'm doing a pretty poor job of holding up the minis while I sit down. Outstanding. Uh, Triton is next with that beautiful base. Uh-huh. Very cool. And man, last but definitely not least, one of the best miniatures in all four United Seasons. Look at that. Man. Crystal's just outstanding. I love this box, but not as much as I love this box. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm holding this in my hands and it's so heavy. All right, let's open it and see. Let's, okay, we'll look at the back first because the back is nice, but... That's enough of the back. Let's open it and see the inside. That's what we came to see, right? You can Google image the back if you really want to. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yep. Tiago, I don't know if you're watching this. I'm talking to my best friend, Tiago, not Tiago Aranya, the uh, designer here. <laughs> um, but if you're watching this, man, I know you're going to like this part. Wow. That was the Maximum Carnage music from the game. The game had outstanding music because they actually used a rock band by the name of Green Jelly who did their music. And you can tell because the music in that game friggin' slaps. Okay. Welcome to the Carnage. We got a nice couple pages here. Oh, Statue of Liberty location has its own special thing. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh, this is, I'm starting to salivate a little bit. The new Sinister Six. Oh, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, I want to, I want to be breezy, but I also want to take some time to enjoy this because my computer is so low on memory that I'm afraid these video files are going to be too long and I won't be able to actually edit them. Uh, so if that happens, that's why. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm finally holding these in my hand. It's incredible. Oh, that, I can't wait to try that out. And I'm really curious to see because there's this big well here and I've always wanted to know if those fit in that well or not. Because that was one thing that kind of stumped me about this box. Was where do I put these when all is said and done and I'm storing it away? Chibi Statue of Liberty, amazing. Fisk Tower, my favorite Marvel character, amazing. Hell's Kitchen, cool, cool, cool. Bishop Publishing, I think that's Kate Bishop, not Bishop the X-Man. But Bishop the X-Man probably had been there once. All right. Oh my gosh. Okay. Dark Carnage. This is another thing where I'm so unclear as to exactly what the rules are for Dark Carnage. I really have to read them and see. So I think you start with the challenge, and then if you fail the challenge, he becomes the main villain, and then this is what you have to do. Um, ah, these two. Amazing. We finally got Scorpion. Scream as well. Shriek. 
and Michael Morbius, which is how he should talk, because in the cartoon he had the Eastern European accent. Ah, oh, yeah, lots of special setups here. Love it. Um, in fact, one of the funniest lines in all of the entirety of that Spider-Man cartoon was Michael Morbius is introducing himself to Felicia Hardy, and he's being all weird about it because he's Michael Morbius. And then Felicia and Peter walk away. And Felicia says, geez, what B-movie did he come from? And Peter's answer is, the revenge of Dracula's ego. <laughs> that is, that really is great. Peter, classic Peter Parker quip. All right, let's get this open. And there's the Carnage Challenge. There's Morbius' hero deck. Ah! Another great quote from that episode where they're competing and Peter says, don't forget, Michael, the tortoise beat the hare. And he says, in my country, we eat tortoises. Ah! That Morbius was just so much more entertaining than the movie Morbius. All right. So we have, uh, what do we got here? We got one, two, three, four, five. Only four. Five, two, three, four, five, six. No, I lied. There's six. They were just kind of stuck together. All right. Nothing's missing. No panic. No panic. Everything is fine. Uh, oh, there's all the weak spots for everybody. Uh-huh. All the weak spots. New Sinister Six. Sinister Six assembled. I love it. I love it to pieces. Oh, and then there's a special rules. Are they? Okay. So those can go here. For now. Whoops. Until I sort those out. You know, this morning... I woke up to the messages, um, the email notifications that my shipment was, you know, out for delivery and it made me bolt upright. If you've ever seen uh, Mr. Bean's Christmas when he wakes up on Christmas morning, that was how I woke up. And I literally just kind of sat by my phone um, waiting and waiting. And as soon as I heard the doorbell upstairs, I ran outside uh, and I was like, okay, I'm here, I'm here. And thankfully the guy left it on the porch so I didn't have to pick up a post office card and then go within two business days because that would have been an absolute bummer. All the cards are there. Glorious. Let's take a look at our first ever United die. Let's roll it. What do you think I'm going to get? I think I'm going to get zero. Hey, I got zero. Look at that. All right. That's a good sign. Sign of things to come. Okay. Carnage. There he is. Look at that dark Carnage with his axe. I'm actually surprised the old Carnage figure didn't have the axe hand because that is so classic Carnage. But this is the new Carnage with that spiral on his forehead and I don't know what that's all about. So I've got some catching up to do. Shriek, who was a very diligent boss in the Maximum Carnage video game. Uh, very hard to hit at some points. Ah, Parker, in my country we eat tortoises. Oh, man, that movie got him so wrong. I'm very, very happy he's purple. One of the characters I wanted to see the most in this whole season. And we got him. And I believe, I believe when this Kickstarter was live... Um, the Morbius movie was around the corner, wasn't it? Was that Morbius movie 2022? I could be wrong. Maybe, but I thought it was 2023. Uh, there is Scream. When I was young, she was just called Female Symbiote. So thankfully they finally gave her a name. Scorpion's turn now. Look at that. Oh, boy. Sometimes in the olden days, they would draw Scorpion's tail where it's just rounded. And it's like... Why? How is that a scorpion tail? Have you seen a scorpion before? So this is exactly what scorpion should look like. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe these two characters made it into a board game. Oh, wow. Okay. I need to remember to look at my screen because I'm too busy admiring the actual miniature. I can do that later. Do that later, Andrew. Show the people. <laughs> wow. Does he have a spider logo on his back? I don't think so. It's okay. 
Oh boy. Okay. This is a special moment for me. I never in a million billion years thought that this was going to be a thing. He was another very diligent boss in the game, very hard to hit. Oh, the Demo Goblin at last. All right. Now, that well definitely does not look like it can hold those things. Absolutely not. So, that's a storage problem for another day. <laughs> look at this. Look at this madness. Look how thick this is. Oh, I remember that being one of the first questions I was pondering when they first showed off this box, which was a very exciting moment because I was not expecting heralds, and boy, did we get heralds. But I was so curious because I'm a nerd, and this is what I think about. I was like, how thick is this box going to be? And thankfully, they let us know pretty early on that this was a chunky, chunky box, and this was like almost a full Kallax shelf of a box. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at those colors, man. All right. And it's, you know what? It's very light. It is surprisingly very light. Uh, I guess because it doesn't have as many cards as you would imagine compared to, you know, one of the boxes this size, like the, uh, the stretch goal boxes or what have you. So I'm going to slowly and carefully open this up. And I may have to pause at one point because of Galactus. I'm sure he's tied up like Fin Fang Foom. But I'm very worried about damage to Galactus. Because I saw some people who were having some issues with that. With the big figures, that tends to be the case, right? The Sentinels had the same problem. So, let's everybody cross our fingers. And oh, beautiful. And hope and pray that everything's all right in here. Okay, Heralds of Galactus and the coming of Galactus. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Ah. That's just incredible. Okay. All right. Here is our locations. One of the coolest location packs I think they've ever given us. Asia, Africa, Europe, South America, North America, Oceania, which apparently kills you. Oh, boy. Sweet. All right. That's going to go right here. These little tokens are going to go right here. These other Velen dashboards, which make me so happy, are going to a Fire Lord. He's got a health thing, but no health. That's interesting. Usually you don't see that. Usually it's one or the other, right? Uh, sorry, there's Frankie Ray Nova. There is Terax the Tyrant, or Terax the Tamer, and Airwalker. Airwalker! Another character never heard of until this game. Ah. Uh, I love when that happens, and I get to learn about all new characters. She's special, and he's special. Yeah. All right. Ooh. Okay. I see him. I see him, and so far, he looks okay. Let's work our way down, right? Start from the top. Work our way down. All right. Frankie Ray Nova. There's her cards. She's all about the fire. And there's the Heralds of Galactus. And then there's Nova's villain cards. So, Hero Nova is purple. Villain Nova is red. That makes sense. I'm okay with that. Okay. Next. Oh my gosh. I cannot tell you how excited I am to sleeve all of this and put all these characters' names on my... Uh, my list in my Word document and my Excel document. Again, right? It's the, the little things that make me happy. I am extremely easy to please. Just give me a giant season worth of stuff and I'm happy for days and years. All right, we got it. This was an easy one. Ooh, Fire Lord's got those special cards. I like when villains have that. He's got Annihilus Seekers for days. He's got his cards there. This is Terax. Uh-huh. 
and then air walker. All right. The big, bad, one-eyed, two-horned, giant purple people eater himself is almost in our grasp. We just have to look at his cards. And there's the Silver Surfer, extra bonus cards, which was very thoughtful to see on. And then your Stop Galactus cards, right? Convince Galactus to spare Earth. That always has to be the last one. Because uh, he cannot be defeated. He's too powerful. And then there's all his cards. He has so many. Okay. There we go. I'm going to slowly remove this. Oh, that's right. It's taped. I should have learned from Meeple Monkeys unboxing. What have I done? It's all right. Let's just get this tape out of the way here. Okay, I think I've gotten all the tape out. I think. Am I wrong? Did I just lie to everybody when I said I got all the tape? Uh, I did! There's another piece of tape right here. There we go. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I want to be very careful, is I'm going to carefully put this back from whence it came. Actually, why am I doing that the stupid way? I'm going to be smart about this. Sorry, everybody. But... Better safe than shoddy, as Sean Connery says in Indiana Jones. There we go. All right. Okay. Now, let's take a look. Let's take a look at what we got. We got Terax with his big old axe. And wow, you're right, Meeple Monkey. He does look a lot like Darkseid. Hmm. Very cool. Uh, Airwalker. Very, very exciting figure. Look at that. His base is fire. <laughs> and he's actually walking on air. Awesome. So happy to learn about new characters. Frankie Ray Nova, who is just, goodness gracious, great balls of fire. She's just a singular ball of fire. We've never had a character look like that. Um, sweet. So much fire that there's not even any purple. You just have to take their word for it that she's an anti-hero. I love that feeling of that translucent plastic because it's a bit softer than regular. And finally, Fire Lord, who I was very excited about. Look at that. That's so cool. Ooh. He's got his, his flaming Q-tip. If you put that in, your ears will literally be burning. So don't try that at home, kids. All right. Now... Galactus is snugly fit in there, so I think what I'm going to do is cut this plastic thing here, if I can. Can I? Will it let me? Hmm. No, it won't let me. So we're going to have to do this again very carefully. We're going to remove you. Yeah, sorry folks, that was a tedious process that you did not need to see. It was just very surgically precise removal of plastic, but here he is. Oh my gosh. Wow. He is so big and surprisingly not as heavy as I thought. They made him light. I remember hearing somebody on the Facebook page calling him uh, akin to a rubber ducky, and he does feel like a very, very hard rubber duck. So he's Definitely made of a different plastic, probably just to save cost and shipping weight and all that stuff. And I'm totally okay with that, as long as he is still the good quality that I believe he is. Sorry, I'm holding him at a weird angle. But there's Galactus's face. And now let's put him next to Nova to really get a sense of scale. Oh my gosh. She's like, hey, how's it going, Galactus? I'm fine. That's Galactus's voice, right? We all know that. Um, let me see something for comparison. I remember thinking back when they announced him, I was like, is he as big as a water bottle? He is bigger than my water bottle. All right. Uh, ha, ha. And here he is next to Mr. Foom. Big difference. Okay. Galactus should be the biggest miniature ever, right? So thankfully 
he is. Even if they make Anti-Monitor, they can probably make him a little wee bit smaller than Galactus, and I would be totally okay with that. So there we go.